Hello, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas, and today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEdge R730 Server Memory Upgrade Kits and how to properly load the system. The Dell PowerEdge R730 has three types of chassis, not including the R730XD chassis. There is the 8 bay small form factor, the 16 bay small small form factor and the 8 bay large form factor. It utilizes Intel E5 2600V3 or V4 series CPUs. If you're having trouble getting your V4 to work, it's probably because you have not updated to the latest BIOS. So simply pop in a V3, update to the latest BIOS and you can get your V4 to work. It, the socket type is a LGA 2011-3. You can put in a V1 or V2 and it'll physically fit. However, it will not work and you have the potential to damage the machine. So do not put in V1s or V2s. V3s and V4s only. Uh, this machine is the next generation from the R720, very popular machine, and the R720, as you know, takes a DDR3 memory. Well, the R730s are the first generation of Dell that actually take DDR4 memory. There are 24 DIMM slots, and it utilizes two types of memory, ECC registered, also known as RDIMM, and load reduced memory known as LRDIMM. And the difference between ECC reg and load reduced is uh, really important because with uh, ECC Reg, you can max out at a total of 768 gigabytes via 2432 gigs at 2666 megahertz. Whereas with load reduced memory, you can actually get four times the capacity and get three terabytes at 24 by 128 gigabyte, again at the 2666 megahertz. So now that we know a little bit about the machine and know uh, the, the maxes and what all it accepts, why don't we go ahead and open one of these up and I'll show you how to uh, physically pull out the parts, put them in, uh, what issues you might run into, and uh, show you a little bit about uh, the memory channels as well. But before we get in, the first thing we need to do is make sure that we put on our uh, ESD gear because you never want to shock the machine. So let's get that on and we'll be right back. Now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine and prevent it from electrostatic discharge. So first things first, make sure that the latch is set to unlock. If it is set to lock, you can simply just grab a Phillips head and twist it over. You can pop it up and voila, you are in. Very simple. You'll notice that there is a nice big air shroud, also known as an air baffle on top, that is uh, controlling all the airflow to keep the uh, CPUs and DIMMs um, cool. Uh, in order to get to them, you're going to need to physically pull this out. Uh, it's very simple. It just pulls straight up. There's no buttons you need to uh, need to push. You just literally need to lift it straight up. Uh, just try not to pull it out and hit anything back here because you could potentially dam damage something. Um, you'll see right now the uh, configuration uh, is actually only four four gigs. Uh, so there's a total of 16 gigs of RAM in here, which for a machine like the R730, as powerful as this is, uh, that's, that's it's, it's sad to see. You need to have definitely more RAM in here so you can maximize the performance. So, uh, But I wanted to point out a few things. You'll notice if you are not going to, say, max out all 24 slots, which not everybody does, let's say you're putting in uh, 8 or 16, um, you, you want to make sure you understand the memory channels. So you'll notice right now um, that there's this, this machine actually only has one CPU, which I should point out. So CPU 1 controls these 12 DIMM slots, and CPU 2 controls uh, these 12 DIMM slots. So you'll notice for CPU 1, there is slot A1 right here. It's the white. Uh, there's two whites together. It's the one on the right, if you're standing from the back. Uh, so uh, you need to make sure that the first module you put in goes into A1. The second module will need to go into A2, which is the next white DIMM slot. Um, and then you need to come all the way over here, and you're going to, again, keep loading the white DIMM slots. We recommend uh, that you always uh, keep uh, a good balance. So uh, we had talked about there's 12 DIMM slots. If you look, it goes white, black, green, white, black, green. Uh, that means that there are four memory channels, and within each channel, there are three DIMMs per channel. So what that means is you should always fill each color up. So um, if you're going to put some in the white, we recommend putting in all of them in the white. So that basically means duplicates of four. So you want to have four DIMMs in. If you want to go up to the next, you're going to put them into the, um, the next slot, which is the black slot. So then you need to have eight. If you want to load up the whole side, you need to put in 12, and then it's not a big deal at that point. But anyhow, I'll show you how to actually physically pull them out um, and put them back in. It's very, very simple. Uh, just like anything else, you're going to push the tab down. I do always recommend to kind of put your hand on top because sometimes it'll just pop off and you can easily damage a module or you'll, you can damage 
uh, the actual motherboard itself, um, and which is never good because if you damage one of these uh, DIMM slots, next thing you know you have to buy a whole new motherboard because you can't utilize the DIMM slot and nobody wants that. Uh, so you simply are just going to pull these out. And it's a little snug back here, so some people actually remove this. It's very simple if you want to. Uh, I can fit my fingers back there, so it's not a very big issue. Uh, but for some people, they prefer to just take the fans out, and it comes out very easy. So and one of the things I always like to point out, um, if you are looking to extend the life of your server, so this server at this point is uh, probably about five years old or so, which sounds crazy to think DDR4 has actually been out now for um, seven years, but I think this machine is about five years old. Um, so some people are actually starting to, to get rid of them and replace them with R740s, uh, but if you're not wanting to make the jump to go all the way to an R740 because they're going to be a, a very expensive price tag with that, um, the best way to kind of band-aid uh, the machine and get more performance out of it, in my opinion, is always RAM. Uh, boosting the RAM will give you uh, an, a, a huge increase in performance. A lot of people think that the first thing you need to upgrade is the CPU. Well, I definitely recommend having good CPUs inside. I feel like the CPUs are always kind of ahead of everything else, and the RAM and everything else, the drives and parts are always kind of catching up to the CPU, and the CPU is the fastest. So what that means is upgrading the RAM is really going to get you a uh, better performance. So now I'm going to show you how to physically load them. It's very simple. Um, I'm going to do 12 slots over here. So the first thing I recommend is actually putting all the tabs down. just makes it easier for you so you're not fumbling with it while you're you know, have actually memory in your hand because you never want to damage any parts and you want to keep the parts safe. Okay, so I got everything opened up. So uh, another thing I would like to point out, uh, when you look at the module itself, you will see there is a key or a notch right here in the middle. Uh, this key is important. The manufacturers have designed the parts so that uh, you can't put the wrong part in the wrong machine. Um, I mean, you can a little bit in some situations, but they do a lot to prevent it. So, for instance, if you were to try to put uh, DDR2 or DDR3 into this machine, the key is actually in a different spot. It physically would not fit. Okay, um, so they do that again just to prevent people from making errors. You couldn't put a desktop module in, for instance. Uh, it's all just about uh, keep you know preventing users from making errors. But it's also important because you need to look at um, uh, the uh, the dim uh, slot itself because the dim slot has a notch in the middle and so the notches are not always on the same side so for instance it flip flops from here to here so if you're putting it in the wrong way you can easily damage the leads and again that could damage the actual part or damage the motherboard uh, and nobody wants to have to replace the motherboard because one it's a pain to pull it all out and two it's going to be expensive so let me physically show you how to do it so again line this up so I actually need to switch it around and then you're just going to put it right in and one thing I always also like to point out as well, you want to hear a nice little click right here. And that means you, you got it firmly and sometimes you have to push a little bit. Uh, we, we have a lot of issues where people uh, don't fully seat the memory and then they think that the memory itself has a failure and there's not actually a failure, it's just that the memory is not properly seated. So I'm going to go ahead and load up all the slots right now. One thing to note, the module flips right here. And voila, and just like that in a couple of minutes, you can uh, load up all the modules and you can see it's very simple. Uh, one thing I would like to note, um, you need to always just double check that all of the tabs are pushed in and then you know that everything is properly seated on mine fully in and there's nothing sticking out. Sometimes I'll show you on this side, sometimes you'll think they're all fully in and one is kind of sticking out like that and then you know that there's actually an issue and you need to make sure that the thing gets, the module gets fully seated otherwise it'll throw some errors. Okay, so let's show you how to put it back together. Uh, now that we've loaded it up, you're simply just going to take the air baffle, line everything back up and set it down gently. And it moves in, it fits just perfectly, right? And you're going to take the top Put it back on. Just need to make sure you line everything up perfectly. And then you're simply going to take the latch and close it. And you'll hear a nice little click and they're back in place. And then you'll get a screwdriver and you can lock it back up. So first of all, thanks for stopping by to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R730. If you have any questions or you need some upgrades yourself, please reach out to sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.